joint work with uh, Sofia Alhiti, which is at e who is at EPFL. So, like, as a brief intro, so as I said, I'm going to talk about random graph models, and I mean, random graph models really underlie much of what what we do as network scientists. So, for instance, uh, they have use as uh, reference or null models, and they kind of guide the development of various methods. We also have mechanistic or explanatory models like the what stroger small world model or the preferential attachment model, which kind of uh, give us an idea how the structures we see in networks uh, come into being. Um, and one important uh, area uh, of uh, where um, random graphs are important is the, 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 the study of uh, the interplay between various topological features and uh, um, their effect on dynamical processes on graphs. And more lately, uh, random graph models have also been used as uh, generative models for infor inferring uh, network structures here. I'm referring to the stochastic log model and the degree, uh, its degree corrected variants, uh, which uh, have led to various advances in the area of community detection. Um, although uh, random graph models uh, have been expanded to include various graph features over the time, Still, most uh, random graph models uh, focus only in a, on a limited subset of features, and uh, in general, they are uh, unrealistic uh, with respect to other features. Here, again, maybe a, an exception is the degree corrected stochastic block model, which combines the uh, stochastic block model and the configuration model and is arguably a much better fit for many real world networks. But ideally, what we would like to have is uh, models that basically can replicate uh, any set of empirical features uh, of networks. Um, and what would be even better is basically a method that given a network would just uh, give us an optimal set of features which uh, kind of give us a good uh, summary of the salient features of the network. However, one big obstacle in the way of constructing such models is basically the inability of uh, random graph models, which uh, have uh, independent ed edges to reproduce the prevalence of uh, triangles and other network motifs in, found in real world networks. So motifs are, widely believed to uh, play an important role in the structural or and functional organization of complex networks. However, uh, methods for quantifying the local structure of networks and also models for replicating uh, uh, network motifs are kind of underdeveloped uh, when compared to, to, to other methods, for instance, community detection. However, maybe they, there's a good reason for it. In general, local structures are quite messy, uh, not the least due to the fact that as you increase the size of the neighborhood you're examining, the number of potential patterns increases uh, faster than exponential. So for instance, you have uh, over 9,000 uh, directed motifs and just five vertices. So as you increase the size of the neighborhood that you're considering, just counting, for instance, frequencies of subgraphs uh, soon becomes unfeasible. And another problem with subgraphs is actually that their uh, occurrence is kind of coupled uh, uh, to a complex web of uh, interdependence. So in general, increasing the, the frequency of one kind of subgraph will also change the frequencies of others. And uh, for models, the problem uh, with including um, higher order uh, uh, subgraphs into models is that in general they lead to nonlinear and uh, hence untractable random graph models. However, uh, maybe uh, if we are to, to find models that can uh, generate networks with realistic, uh, uh, with, uh, with realistic structures, um, we can't really uh, go without modeling uh, local structures. This is maybe best exemplified by the fact that many popular network features are can actually be expressed in terms of subgraph counts. So if we 
could get a handle on subgraphs, then maybe we could uh, get a bit closer to the ideal case where we can model uh, networks with realistic structures. Um, so one way of constructing such general models is to follow the maximum entropy principle. So basically, given any uh, set of features, the way we, uh, maximum entropy models are constructed is to constrain uh, the, uh, these the subset of features to their observed values and then to assume that the graph is uh, maximally random. So here the randomness of the uh, uh, of the model or of the distribution is measured in terms of the Shannon entropy. So in, when we impose these constraints um, in terms of expectations, uh, we know that the, uh, the resulting distribution is an exponential uh, uh, of the features and which that is also the reason why these models are sometimes referred to as exponential random graphs. Uh, another way of doing it is to impose hard constraints. So in this case, basically, we only consider uh, graphs that have exactly the same set of features uh, um, uh, as the original graph. And all these graphs uh, that satisfy these constraints are then assigned uh, equal probability. And indeed, many uh, models such as the uh, Adafrani model, the configuration model, the stochastic block model, and its degree corrected uh, variant can be uh, reformulated uh, as maximum entropy models. Um, and indeed, exponential random graphs, uh, which use uh, subgraph counts as, as features, are the prevalent approach for modeling uh, the prevalence of triangles and other net network motifs. In this case, the distribution over graphs basically uh, has this uh, exponential form. Um, and however, in practice, uh, these models are not really tractable because uh, the, um, of the difficulties of computing the normalizing constant, also known as the partition function, which requires summing this uh, exponential term over all graphs on the n nodes. And uh, in general, this uh, becomes quite hard when uh, we include higher order interactions in terms of subgraph counts. So for instance, if you, you have the number of triangles uh, as a feature, then basically you have terms that are uh, factors of indicator variables of edges. So, and I mean, not on, uh, in general systems with interactions are quite hard and uh, there exist exact solutions for very few cases, even like in a much, arguably much simpler case of let's say a spin system with nearest neighbor interactions on a uh, two dimensional lattice. Uh, this, uh, an exact solution is only known in, uh, in the case of two di dimensions without an external magnetic field. And the exact solution is uh, uh, regarded as one of uh, as a landmark results in uh, result in theoretical physics. So basically, realistically, the, our capacity to obtain exact solutions for models with interactions is kind of around uh, the two-dimensional uh, icing model. So because these models aren't really tractable at present, we don't really know how to do calculations and inference using these models. So in practice, uh, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods are used in general. However, these are known to, for instance, suffer from exponential mis uh, mixing times. There are other problems related to de degeneracy, which basically uh, refers to the fact that these models uh, uh, are produced almost the same uh, graphs for large uh, regions of the parameter space. Another problem is inconsistencies. So basically, if you have a network, you fit it uh, uh, to an exponential random graph, and then you generate from that model. In general, the generated model does not really look like the, the, the graph that uh, one starts with. So therefore, today I'm going to talk about a different kind of uh, maximum entropy model. So instead of, uh, and for this, instead of uh, constraining the number or occurrences of, of subgraphs in, in the network. Basically, um, we are going to consider uh, an alternative set of constraints. So basically, we are, going to, uh, we are going to give the building blocks that are used to construct uh, the graph 
and then assume that these are put together in a fashion that's maximally random. So instead of saying that uh, a graph contains a certain number of edges and triangles, basically we would say it is made of uh, using this, a certain number of edges and a certain number of triangles. And therefore, these models are kind of uh, related to, to other models for higher in, uh, that include explicitly higher order, order interactions. For instance, this includes hypergraph models, bipartite models for collaboration networks, and also simplicial complexes. However, uh, these types of models in general consider higher order, act, order interactions that are cliques, which is maybe unjustified. Uh, I at least don't see any reason why we, uh, higher on order interactions can only be cliques. Another problem with these models is that they don't really generalize well to directed networks, which uh, since it's very unlikely that a directed network will contain any significant number of uh, directed complete uh, subgraphs. However, there are also other models uh, that contain higher order interactions, which can have arbitrary topology. So one of those models is, uh, it was introduced in a paper uh, called Sparse Random Graphs with Clustering by Bolovas Jensen and Riordan. And another model is a, basically a generalization of the configuration model that includes uh, higher order interactions with arbitrary uh, topology by Kerr and Newman. And actually these uh, models, they can generate graphs with a large variety of lo local structures. And uh, we have analytical solutions for many fundamental properties of these models like phase trans transition, subgraph counts. And uh, more recently, uh, Newman has published some uh, results re regarding the spectra of such models. However, uh, although these models have very, uh, um, have many, uh, nice properties. The problem in practice is that uh, basically given a certain graph, we, we don't really have uh, uh, a way of determining which kinds of uh, higher order interactions we should put in the model in order to uh, uh, get something that's similar to, to the graph. Okay, so as I said today, I'm going to talk about maximum entropy models where nodes are connected by copies of small subgraphs that can have arbitrary topology. So first I'm going to derive uh, expression, uh, closed form expressions for the entropy in the canonical and microcanonical case, uh, including degree corrected models. So here we focus on the entropy because of its relevance, uh, the, its connection to the likelihood and hence uh, its uh, importance in statistical inference. Then I'm also going to introduce a coarse graining procedure which uh, allows us to construct models that have a lower parametric complexity. And then I'm uh, in, in the last uh, part of my talk I'm going to give uh, some examples of the types of models one can obtain when one considers different kinds of uh, atomic subgraphs. So here, uh, I'm going to first focus on uh, random graphs with motifs and uh, how to do statistical, statistical inference with them. And then later we are going to consider the case where uh, atoms can have node and edge labels, uh, which uh, will lead us to uh, stochastic block models, models for link communities and models for multi-layer networks. Okay. So as I said, we are going to consider maximum entropy models where we assume that we are given uh, basic building blocks. So the, these are kind of uh, phenomenological models similar to molecular gases, for instance, in statistical mechanics. So in statistical mechanics, uh, if we are uh, given a container which we know contains oxygen and hydrogen atoms, in general, our approach is not to like formulate all the interactions between the atoms and then to, to derive a, statisti a statistical mechanical model for that. Instead, uh, we kind of uh, use our uh, knowledge of chemistry and assume that, uh, so gas, uh, that we have a gas that's made of uh, molecules rather than interacting single atoms. However, this uh, this in general requires the switch in, in phase space. So instead of uh, 
describing only the position and velocity of each molecule. The phase space needs to be expanded to account for uh, um, other, type, uh, other degrees of freedom, such as rotations and vibrations, uh, which arise when one has uh, molecules. So uh, in our uh, case, this, uh, this requires uh, the, the consideration of a sp phase space, which uh, we, uh, of objects we call subgraph configurations. So basically, a subgraph configuration is just uh, any set of subgraphs uh, on, on, on a set of vertices. So another way of thinking uh, about subgraph configurations is as uh, generalized hypergraphs. So basically, these are the hypergraphs where uh, hyper edges are not restricted to be clicks, they can have an arbitrary topology. And uh, so we are going to make the connection to random graphs by the, the observing the fact that given a, a subgraph configuration, we can map it onto a graph by simply taking the union of all the edges that, are, that appear in the subgraph. So given a certain graph, another way of thinking about subgraph configurations is, uh, is in terms of decompositions of the uh, graph into smaller pieces. So in order to properly describe uh, the, the space of subgraph configurations, we, the, uh, we need to, we rely on the concept of isomorphism. So isomorphism, uh, as uh, probably all of you know, an isomorphism is um, bijection between two, uh, the vertices of two graphs which conserve uh, the connectivity of edges. So, uh, and in general, the, the concept of uh, isomorphism can be generalized to, to directed uh, graphs and uh, node or edge labeled graphs simply by requiring that uh, the isomorphism also conserves uh, the, these additional information. Um, and indeed, in the, in, in, in the models I'm going to describe, the, the, the only difference between a directed and undirected graph is basically the, 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 mm, the symmetry of, of the basic building blocks we are going to use. So, um, and, and another concept we're going to need is uh, the concept of the ultimate morphism group. So uh, basically uh, all isomorphisms of a graph to itself form a group uh, called the automorphism group. And associated to the, uh, to the automorphism group uh, is the concept of orbits which, uh, so orbits are basically minimal classes of vertices that are invariant under uh, vertex permutations that leave the structure of the graph unchanged. So here are some examples of uh, motifs and uh, basically the verti here the, the vertices, they are colored according to, to their orbits. Okay, so in general, we, we just followed the usual definition of a, of a subgraph and um, it follows directly from the definition of the automorphism group that given a set of m uh, vertices they're uh, m factorial uh, divided by the size of the automorphism group possible subgraphs uh, on, on this set um, and uh, simply by multiplying uh, that number with the uh, with n choose m one can the number of uh, distinct sub, uh, subgraphs of uh, the complete uh, graph on, on a set of n vertices. Mm. So, and in general, we, we will uh, uh, consider the space of all subgraph configurations uh, with a given uh, set of motifs and uh, basically one way of thinking about it is just to uh, so th the space basically consists of all the, the subgraph configurations of which the uh, motif set is a, is a subset of them. Okay. So um, we can also generalize the concept of, uh, of degree to the, the to subgraph configurations. So uh, for this, we, we make this, a distinction between the orbits of, of the subgraphs. So basically the uh, the, uh, the deg orbit degree corresponding to orbit mi uh, is the number of subgraphs in a configuration for which uh, the vertex is uh, in, in, in that orbit. 
So for instance, we, uh, given a subgraph configuration, we would have uh, it that contains edges and triangles. Then uh, the triangle degree would simply correspond to the number of triangles attached to a vertex and the edge degree, just the number of uh, edge subgraphs uh, in, in the configuration attached to the vertex. And indeed, the, the, the concept of graphi graphicality extends to atomic uh, degree sequences. So uh, for instance, the atomic degree sequence has to contain uh, all the orbits in the right proportions, just as, uh, for instance, the, mm, uh, the degree sequence of an undirected graph uh, has to sum up the, to an even number. And in general, we will assume that the, all degree sequences we consider are graphical. Um, another convenient way uh, of describing uh, subgraph configurations is to use what we call uh, um, subgraph tensors, which are basically uh, like indicator variables, which uh, indicate uh, tell us which subgraphs in a certain are in a certain configuration. Uh, which so it's basically the analog of the adjacency matrix uh, for subgraph configurations, and uh, we can write various. Uh, properties of a subgraph configuration in terms of uh, these indicator variables. So for instance, summing over all uh, the, the, uh, the subgraph tensors uh, of a certain kind would give us how many uh, subgraphs of, of a certain type are, are in the configuration. Similarly, summing over all the subgraphs that uh, uh, um, have uh, v in a certain orbit would give us the orbit degree of, uh, of a vertex. Okay, so as I said, the, 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 we, we'll consider distributions or subgraph configurations that maximize the Shannon entropy under, uh, under various constraints. So, and uh, in order to obtain the distribution over graphs, uh, Basically, what we do is we project configurations by taking the union of the, the edge sets uh, of the subgraphs in the configuration to obtain a graph. So basically, uh, uh, given a certain distribution over subgraph configurations, the probability of the graph under this model is simply given by the sum of the probabilities of the configurations of which the, con uh, the projection is the, is the uh, graph. Uh, so this is basically uh, just another latent uh, state model. The only difference maybe to, to, to other uh, latent state models is that actually uh, in the case of, a subgraph, uh, of subgraph configuration models, we have uh, each latent state uh, corresponds to a unique graph. As I said, we are going to maximize the, the, the entropy of the distribution over subgraph configurations and not over, uh, over, uh, over graphs, but still uh, the, the entropy of the distribution over configurations uh, provides us with an upper bound uh, of the entropy of the distribution over graphs. Okay, so the first kind of ensembles we are going to consider are uh, what are also known as canonical ensembles, which are uh, maximum entropy distributions for constraints given in the form of uh, expectations. And uh, it is well known that the, 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 uh, there is a, uh, the distribution that maximizes the Shannon entropy has this exponential form, where uh, again, Z is the, the, the normal, uh, a normalizing constant. So in, as I said, in general, it's quite, uh, the computing this uh, partition function is a, a major ch challenge. So basically the way we get around uh, this complication is by considering features that are lin linear combinations of subgraphs so we don't have any interactions and the estimations uh, can be done uh, rather straightforwardly. Okay, so the, the simplest canonical ensemble uh, uh, we can formulate uh, 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 arises by uh, take a, uh, choosing a set of uh, atomic subgraphs and constraining their uh, average counts. So in this case, the, the probability distribution uh, can uh, be factorized into terms corresponding to individual subgraphs which tells us that subgraphs are just uh, an IID with a probability which is equal to the, the average number of subgraphs divided by the total number of potential subgraphs. And again, the, the entropy can simply be calculated by, uh, by multiplying 
the, the number of potential subgraphs by binary entropy corresponding to this uh, probability. However, if we just constrain uh, the, the count of, uh, of atomic subgraphs uh, in our configuration, this in general leads to, to graphs which have uh, Poisson type degree distributions and hence are not really uh, um, realistic for, for many uh, real world networks. So in order to alleviate the, this shortcoming, we can consider degree corrected models by constraining or orbit degrees, which allows us to uh, obtain uh, models that uh, have hit both heterogeneous degree sequence, but also can potentially have heterogeneous distributions of subgraphs across the nodes. So again, basically what we do is we uh, just uh, formulate the, the constraints in terms of uh, orbit degree distributions. Then uh, again, the probability distribution can be factorized into uh, uh, into the contributions uh, coming from individual subgraphs, which allows us, uh, which basically tells us that uh, subgraphs occur independently. Uh, and uh, with this probability, which maybe you, uh, you might be familiar in the, from uh, like exponential uh, random graphs. Um, the only, so, However, these uh, equations in general ha don't have any closed form solution, but uh, taking the, the sparse uh, limit in general, uh, we, we can just assume that the occurrence of any subgraphs is quite low, which allows us to, to approximate the, the, the probabilities uh, quite efficiently. And then when we impo uh, impose the constraints, we uh, obtain following uh, e expression for the end, uh, for the probability of individual subgraphs, which is basically a generalization of the usual uh, Chung-Lu configuration model. Okay, so now because uh, subgraphs uh, occur independently, basically the entropy of the ensemble is uh, given by the sum of the binaries and binary entropies corresponding to, the, to all the subgraphs uh, in the model uh, and it can be uh, basically by the sum can be taken, and uh, this here is the, the, the expression that you obtain. And this expression generalizes uh, known entropy formulas for degree corrected canonical ensembles for undirected graphs, directed graphs, uh, simplicial complexes, and hypergraphs. Okay, so the next uh, the kind of ensemble uh, is what uh, is known as microcanonical ensembles, which correspond to maximum entropy distributions for hard constraints. So in microcanonical ensembles, what we do is we impose uh, the constraints exactly, which basically means that all configurations that satisfy the, the, the given constraints um, have equal probability, and those that do not satisfy the constraints have zero probability. So in this case, basically computing the, the, the probability of configurations and the entropy just re reduces to finding the number of uh, configurations that satisfy given constraints. So for instance, if you uh, constrain uh, the number of uh, subgraphs in the configurations, you uh, basically uh, obtain uh, it's a, a model that's equivalent to, to, to just uh, randomly choosing uh, subgraphs. Uh, yeah. So, but again, uh, we, we we also want to to uh, to formulate uh, degree corrected uh, ensemble. So, and for this, we are going to consider the. Uh, the, the random graph model introduced by Kerr and Newman, which is uh, basically a generalization of the uh, configuration model to, to arbitrary motifs. So in their paper, they, they formulate uh, the model in terms of a generation uh, mechanism, which is uh, basically the analog of, uh, of the stop matching algorithm for the edge only configuration model. So basically, the way the, the model works is that you attach to each vertex uh, stubs or partial subgraphs corresponding to their orbit degrees. Then for each motif, basically, you uh, pick uh, uniformly at random 
uh, these stops in appropriate combinations and then you you match them to to uh, to form uh, a copy uh, of the of the subgraph under consideration so for instance if your set of uh, Subgraphs, con uh, atomic subgraphs consists of edges and triangles. You would have uh, that you would match the edge stubs in pairs and the, the triangle stubs in, in triplets, and then connect them to to, to form edges and, and triangles. However, there is uh, only one pro uh, slight problem with the uh, with this generation mechanism. Although it generates uh, all potential matchings uh, uniformly, it can also create uh, um, cases where stubs uh, that are attached to the same vertex are matched together, which kind of leads to uh, vertex contractions of the original uh, subgraph, which can be thought of as uh, generalized self-loops. And it also allows for uh, multiple copies of the same subgraph to be created. So uh, basically, in order to, to count the number of uh, subgraph configurations that uh, satisfy uh, the degree constraints. So the way uh, we proceed is by first counting the number of potential matchings given the uh, orbit degree distribution, uh, which is uh, uh, can be shown to be given by by this expression. And then, how, as I said, however, this uh, includes the cases where you you have these uh, vertex contractions and parallel subgraphs. So in order to, to account for these cases, we consider the probability uh, that um, uh, the, the matching process does not create any such uh, parallel subgraphs or vertex contractions. And once we correct uh, the, the, the num uh, the <coughs> Uh, for these cases, basically, we can obtain uh, the total number of uh, subgraph configurations that uh, satisfy the constraints. So I'm not going to go into detail uh, uh, of the calculation of uh, of these terms, but uh, can be calculated. And this here is the the, the final uh, expression one obtains. So again, this is a generalization of entropy uh, of, of known entropy expressions for directed graphs, undirected graphs, simplicial complex subgraphs, and so on. So, um, how, so although we we were able to formulate these uh, degree corrected uh, subgraph conf configuration models, uh, th there is a small problem with these models, and that's basically uh, if you if you constrain the orbit degree distribution for uh, all the orbits, you end up needing quite a lot of parameters to describe a degree corrected model. So, uh, and this kind of poses a problem in the context of inference, for instance, where uh, in general, the goal is to find a, a balance between goodness at, of fit and parametric complexity. So if we have models that are inherently, uh, have inherently high parametric complexity, this might uh, lead to, uh, to underfitting uh, of the models, for instance. So one way, uh, so therefore we uh, consider a coarse graining procedure where basically instead of uh, conserving orbit degrees individually, we conserve their sum instead. So if you have, Two, orb, uh, two, two orbits uh, which uh, might correspond uh, to, to the same uh, subgraph or, or different subgraphs. Basically, uh, instead, if you uh, constrain their sum instead of them separately, this uh, again uh, leads to models where uh, the, the, the subgraphs occur independently. It's, uh, the, the, the derivation is exactly the same as in the orbit uh, degree corrected case. And basically, one can show that uh, the only uh, um, uh, different is, is uh, basically the transformation. Uh, so you, you have to switch uh, the terms corresponding to the individual orbit degrees with, with, um, with these quantities, and then you, you can obtain. Uh, so, so, so entropy or of the mm, of the canonical model, for instance, uh, under the uh, under such coarse grain constraints, and uh, uh, we also have similar expressions for microcanonical ensembles. Uh, 
And indeed, this uh, orbit aggreg aggregation procedure is, is commutative, so you can uh, basically aggregate any uh, mm, division of the orbits into uh, disjoint subsets. So the, the, this generalizes uh, straightforwardly to, to the case where you aggregate more than two orbits. Okay, but uh, of course, uh, once you, you have uh, you you have this aggregation procedure, you end up with uh, many more models than uh, you started with. So, in general, in practice, one one kind of uh, has to find the, the has to settle for a model. For instance, let's assume we have a directed graph. Uh, so, which kind of uh, model are we going to use? Are we going to use a configuration model that conserves the in and out degree separately? Or should we include, for instance, mutual edges and the, uh, their degree distributions? Or another uh, option would be simply to aggregate the in, in and out degree and just conserve the total degree uh, uh, of vertices. Um, or we could also have the same model, which also includes uh, mutual edges, or even uh, who knows, maybe uh, just a Erdos-Rheny model is, uh, is is a better fit. But in general, these uh, choices as to which model uh, better reflects the structure uh, of a given network should be made on the basis of the data. So, for instance, one way of uh, of doing this is to to, to do uh, um, model selection using posterior or odds ratio. Okay, so this basically uh, the brings me to the end of the, the, the general calculations of the entropy. Uh, are there any questions so far? Yeah, all this. I think we're good. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, okay. So now I'm just going to to to, to talk a, a bit about more specific cases um, of this model. So first, I'm going to consider uh, random graph models uh, for networks with motifs. So, for instance, the the canonical models we described actually fall into the same category as the models uh, described by Bolovas, Jansen, and Riordan. Which are, and although one requires, uh, one is required to make some make some minor modifications. It can be shown that they are basically equivalent. So uh, basically, the homogeneous uh, subgraph configuration model uh, corresponds to a certain type of kernel in this class of model, and uh, also the degree corrected one. And actually, one can use the results uh, by Bolovas, Janssen, and Riordan to to derive. Uh, almost any uh, quantity that one could uh, derive for the, the, the normal configuration model. And similarly, microcanonical ensembles, as we have seen, are basically uh, the, uh, the equivalent to the, to the model uh, introduced by Kerr and Newman. And again, the, the, this model is basically a generalization of the edge-only configuration model. and in principle, one can do any type of calculation one can do with the, 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 the edge-only configuration model by using, the, for instance, the generating function uh, formulas. And however, as I said, one, uh, the, one of the problems maybe with, with these types of models is that they have very high parametric complexity. So uh, the, by using the coarse graining procedure we introduced, one can basically uh, construct model, uh, models of, with lower parametric complexity. For instance, one could aggregate the orbits uh, simply by motifs, which would require just one degree sequence uh, per motif uh, uh, in the model. Or one can even go further and, for instance, aggregate all the orbits into one degree distribution, which basically would correspond to uh, constraining only the total number of uh, subgraphs attached to each, uh, each vertex. Okay, so, okay, one might say, okay, this is all nice in theory, but basically the problem we really want to answer is that given a certain network, can we say what kind of basic building blocks this is made of? So, and so actually using uh, these maximum entropy models, one can uh, 
answer this using techniques of statistical inference. For instance, uh, one can take a Bayesian approach where uh, uh, the Bayes theorem has this form. And then once you have formulated this, basically the problem reduces to finding a subgraph configuration given G, which maximizes the posterior. And uh, basically this can be done by setting up a non-parametric prior on the model parameters and then just uh, trying to find a configuration that maximizes the posterior probability. Okay, so for instance, here's an, uh, an example uh, of this procedure applied to, to a the scientific collaboration network of network scientists. So here, the, uh, th these results are uh, for motifs up to order eight. So as we would expect in a, a in collaboration network, we find quite a lot of cliques, which would basically correspond to and author publications, but uh, actually we are also able to infer uh, patterns that uh, that are not cliques. Uh, for instance, we, we have uh, many uh, subgraphs that correspond to uh, like high degree authors collaborating with uh, the same set of nodes, but not necessarily with each other, for instance. And so, Basically, the, the, the inferred configuration looks something like this for this network. So, as you can see, especially like in this uh, in this dust part, uh, we, we, we obtain a very like uh, sensible partition of the network into uh, smaller building blocks. And here's a, a zoom in of the largest connected component. And, and uh, this was done uh, as a Bayesian, uh, as, as you described with a Yes, yes. So parametric prior. Yeah, so it's basically just the same thing that one does when doing uh, statistical inference for, for communities. It's basically uh, there one uses the, the stochastic block model as a gener uh, generative model. Here, this is basically the same thing, but done with, uh, with, the, with the subgraph configuration models. Mm -hmm. So this is maybe not too interesting, as we uh, already know that uh, the expect that the network contains uh, many cliques, or that it can be decomposed into cliques. But uh, for instance, we we also analyzed uh, a set of metabolic networks. Here are for the the the, the uh, subgraphs that we find for the metabolic network of E. coli and uh, using subgraphs up to size five uh, and there are in total more than 9,000 of these. So the, these are, the met method really picks very concise sets of uh, uh, motifs out of, uh, very, out of a very large set of candidates. And uh, for the metabolic network, we find that actually these non-trivial patterns cover 97% of, uh, of, of all the edges. And uh, we actually recover um, connectivity patterns that are known to have significant uh, functional roles in these um, in metabolic networks. For instance, we have these long chain chains of uh, reversible reactions, uh, which are known to play an important role in the um, regulation uh, of metabolism. Similarly, we, we have these uh, quite a, a lot of uh, direct cycles, which are also a typical uh, motif in, in metabolic networks. Um, and actually, so this data set contains uh, 43 uh, metabolic networks of 43 different organisms. And uh, when we apply the, met uh, the same method to all of these, we, we obtain pretty much uh, similar uh, uh, results. Um, so, okay, so this, this was basically about uh, inferring like these uh, subgraph configurations from, from binary interactions or, or, or graphs. But I should also say that uh, this subgraph configuration formalism actually also uh, includes uh, cases where we, we simply don't project these subgraph configurations uh, on, 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 onto single edges. So th these include hypergraphs, hypertight models, uh, simplicial complexes, directed hypergraphs, or power, uh, and uh, structures known as power graphs, for instance. And uh, the subgraph, uh, basically, these are special cases uh, of the subgraph configuration model uh, where the you know, 
subgraphs are restricted to have a certain topology. Okay, so now I'm briefly going to talk about uh, uh, what kind of models we get when we consider uh, subgraphs that have node and uh, vertex and edge labels. So in the case of, uh, of vertex labels, for instance, just if you consider uh, single edges with, with vertex uh, labels, we uh, the only thing we have we have to do is really we have to modify the the definition of the uh, of, of an isomorphism so that an isomorphism has to uh, also conserve uh, uh, edge and vertex labels um, and in the case of the uh, of uh, single edge atoms basically we we, we have two uh, two cases one is when both nodes have the same label the other is when they have different labels and uh, so they differ in the sense that uh, when they have the same label, we, we have just one uh, one orbit and then uh, of size two, and the automorphism group is, uh, has size two. When they have different labels. We just we have two orbits and then, uh, and a trivial automorphism group. Um, again, in the case of, for instance, directed edges, we have b square. Uh, if you have b labels, we have uh, b squared uh, sing. Uh, possible uh, label single edge atoms uh, which all have a trivial automorphism group and two orbits and uh, in order so basically in order to uh, to get the stochastic block model what we uh, um, have to do is to con consider atoms with uh, vertex labels and uh, then constrain the counts and uh, say that vertex labels of the atoms have to match the the, the vertex label uh, or like block assignments uh, of, the, of the graph vertices. Um, and uh, in a similar way, one can also uh, obtain degree corrected stochastic block model. So in the case of uh, the, if we uh, uh, constrain the orbit, uh, the degree distribution at the level of orbits, this is basically equivalent to constraining the number of uh, neighbors a certain vertex has in each of the communities. So. If we have b uh, uh, b blocks, then we would have a, a size b um, degree uh, vector. However, in general, we we don't uh, the degree distribution is not conserved at that level of detail. Instead, we conserve the total uh, degree of vertices, which is basically equivalent to aggregating all the orbits that correspond to the same vertex label into one degree distribution. And once we do that, uh, the, we, we, we can uh, we, we recover the um, entropy expression for degree corrected stochastic block model in both the directed and undirected case. And similarly, one can also uh, get the, the overlapping stochastic block model by simply lifting the restriction that uh, every vertex of the graph has to uh, have a single uh, unique label. Um, however, uh, the, because of the degree aggregation procedure, we can, the, 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 we can actually also construct different kinds of models. For instance, one could construct the stochastic block model where we distinguish between the, the, the neighbors that are from the same community and the neighbors that are from different communities. Okay, so in the case of uh, of edge labels, basically uh, we we have two uh, uses for edge labels. One is uh, as hidden as a hidden variable. The the other one is uh, for um, modeling multi layer networks. So basically, if we have edges with uh, the, with with hidden labels, then uh, we obtain a a model for uh, with hidden layers. And in this case, the, the entropy is simply given by the, the sum over uh, the, the configuration models corresponding to each label, uh, each uh, edge label. And basically, th this gives us an analog of the uh, stochastic block model for link communities, where the communities, in this case, they are, they are not coupled, uh, they, they are basically coupled by uh, edge inter uh, vertex intersections. Right? And, and if one goes e even further and considers uh, um, atoms with uh, vertex and edge labels, one could, for instance, obtain a model where the hidden layers themselves are stochastic block models and so on. Um,
and of course, it's also possible to, to, to construct models where we have higher order motifs such as triangles with edge and vertex labels, which basically correspond uh, to it gives a, give us a model for uh, networks that have both uh, motifs and uh, community structure. And uh, indeed, uh, there's, there's good reason to believe that uh, the presence of motifs can interfere, for instance, with community detection. For instance, one example is that if, let's say, we take a, just an ER random graph, let's say, on uh, 1,000 vertices with, with 2,000 edges, and then we just add on to it, let's say, 100, uh, hand, 100 copies of, uh, uh, of, of the complete graph on five vertices. Basically, these uh, five cliques, they will at most cover like half of the edges of the graph, which, uh, and which also leads, uh, basically forms a quite dense region inside the graph. Although the generative uh, mechanism is really homogeneous, we, we, we don't uh, have any uh, communities in there. Um, so basically, the presence of motifs can lead to the uh, inference of spurious communities. But uh, obviously the, 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 the converse can also be true. For instance, we can, might have two uh, com communities which differ significantly in terms of their, uh, the, the subgraphs they contain, and then including the uh, information about these local structures might actually facilitate the detection of communities. And again, uh, considering um, higher order sub uh, subgraphs with uh, vertex labels, for instance, uh, can uh, basically gives us a way of generalizing the stochastic block model to, for instance, hypergraphs, and uh, would basically allow us to generalize the methods developed for the for for community detection in graphs to to, to hypergraphs. Okay, so. Uh, then, as I said, one uh, the, the another use of uh, uh, um, of atoms with uh, vertex uh, with edge labels is uh, in the modeling of uh, multi-layer networks, where basically edge labels would correspond to, to to different layers in the network. Again, here basically the the, the only modification one has to make is that uh, the, the the projection from the subgraph configuration to the edges uh, has uh, in this case has to conserve the edge labels uh, in order to conserve the, the layer information. And the the the, the, mo the the simplest case is where we basically have independent layers, but it's not really interesting because in in this case the entropy is simply given by the sum over the uh, the, the the models corresponding to individual individual layers. And again, if one considers uh, edges with uh, edge atoms with both edge and vertex label, one basically recovers the multi-layer stochastic block model. Okay, so the, however, the, the, the subgraph configuration models can also be used to, to construct uh, models where layers are coupled in different ways. For instance, basically, uh, Different layers can be coupled at the level of nodes by simply aggregating their, de uh, uh, their degree distributions, which basically ends, uh, uh, ends up producing a, uh, a model where the aggregate uh, graph is, uh, is generated and then the, the edges are colored uh, in appropriate pro uh, uh, proportions. Uh, which, uh, so in this kind of, uh, of model, basically layers uh, reduced to, to edge covariates or edge colorings. Um, and then uh, another way uh, we can couple uh, layers is basically by considering um, edge, uh, subgraphs that consist of uh, multiple uh, parallel edges of different uh, with different uh, edge labels. So this basically allows us to, to, to generate a network with significant uh, intersection patterns between layers. And uh, th this model is actually quite similar to, to a model uh, the proposed by Ginestra Bianconi. The, the only difference really is that the, the model by Bianconi includes all the uh, intersection patterns uh, one observes in a given network, whereas uh, the, the, our um, construction allows for more concise sets of uh, intersection patterns to, to, 
to, to describe a, a certain network, which is especially important in the context of degree corrected models, uh, since so we, we kind of want to uh, keep tabs on uh, on the parametric complexity of the models. So, sorry to interrupt, Anatole, but um, so in the interest of time, could you um, like start wrapping up maybe? Uh, yes, yes, like you have, I, think like, I, I only have one slide left. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and indeed, uh, the, the way how uh, the way layers are coupled together, either by by node couplings or edge couplings, might have significant effect for, for instance, on on com uh, community detection and other uh, algorithms. And again, basically, by considering motifs with uh, uh, higher order motifs, one can do motif uh, analysis with with these types of models. Okay, so. Um, it's sum up. Uh, basically, we, we introduced a general class of analytically tractable models, uh, uh, maximum entropy models that are parameterized in terms of um, atomic substructures. And we have shown that these models include a large variety uh, of widely used models and also apply to, a uh, uh, to, to quite a lot of uh, different data types. And indeed, the, the only uh, distinct distinction between these models is uh, the types of uh, atomic substructures they use, uh, that are used to cons uh, construct these uh, construct the network, and we uh, presented closed form expressions for the entropy and uh, and the likelihood uh, uh, of configurations under these models, and a method for tuning the parametric complexity uh, of the models, which makes them much more uh, suitable models for doing statistical inference and model selection, for instance. And as, uh, as we have shown, these uh, also provide generative uh, models for um, networks with extensive numbers of triangles and other motifs. And basically, we hope uh, that uh, these models can be used to generalize inference-based methods to other types of uh, network structures, for instance, motifs. Uh, I, I've uh, shown you some, some preliminary results, and hopefully the, the paper will be coming out soon. But again, similar types of, uh, of, uh, of inference-based me methods could basically be generalized to mul uh, uh, motifs in multi-layer networks and inferring, for instance, how layers are coupled uh, uh, to each other in, in multi-layer networks and also uh, to infer link communities in networks. But ideally, really, uh, what we would like to have, what we would like to have is that uh, to do inference using uh, models that include multiple types of features, for instance, uh, models that both include motifs and uh, community structures so that we can, uh, because uh, we know that, that they might affect each other, so the, having a model that includes both could allow us to, to, to do both community detection and uh, uh, inference of uh, motifs in a more principled way. Okay, thank you for your attention. I think that's it. Uh, if anyone has any questions. Thank you, Anatole. Uh, we have time for a quick question or two. And there's one on the chat. Yes, Gesine. Okay, yeah, thank you. It was a very interesting talk, Anatole. Thank you. Um, uh, I think there's lots of flexibility, but I'm not sure how much flexibility there really is. So once you've got your label graphs and you've got all your orbit degrees, um, is there not a danger that if you take sort of too many motifs that there's only one network that satisfies all the constraints? So you have no variability, you don't, there's no inference left. So, um, so the way, so what I'm saying that is because in sequence analysis, when you look at sort of DNA sequences, um, there's a result that says if you, if you just know all the K tuples, say of length eight or so, of a sequence of, of several million, then you can string them together so that they overlap on either side, so that they sort of glue them together. And with high probability, you just get a unique reconstruction. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, obviously it's, uh, it's possible to, to construct models that are kind of frozen so that they, you have so many constraints that uh, basically that there's no, the, 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 you, you end up with a, with a unique, uh, unique graph. But I mean, 
uh, although it's possible to, to construct su such models, I mean, it's, uh, the, you can also do it, for instance, with a stochastic block model, you can take uh, the, the number of communities to be the, uh, equal to the number of nodes and you basically uh, end up with a frozen model. I mean, in general, what we are trying, uh, for instance, when doing statistical inference, what we are trying to do is really, I mean, to, to find like an optimal balance between like how much uh, the, uh, the, the, the model is constrained and uh, how much information we need to describe the parameters of the model. Yeah, but for the stochastic block model, it's, it's obvious that it's frozen. But it's not necessarily clear to me that with your specifications, you would be able to tell whether it's frozen or not. Oh, I mean, so basically the, 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 the entropy is, uh, is a measure of uh, how like constrained, how many configurations we have. So. Uh, if, if you have high entropy, that basically means that there's a lot of like variability and uh, yeah. so it kind of guarantees that the model is not frozen. But I mean, obviously you can have models with zero entropy, but I mean, that's not really oh, what you're looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? I wanted to quickly ask one, so uh, it's in terms of how you got the, the so for example, two examples, the collaboration network or the metabolic network. So uh, it, it isn't entirely clear to me how you, you start looking for these patterns. So did you enumerate all of the possible motifs up to uh, a size five or eight? And did you then look for, for those and did the count? Um, no, I mean, so basically it's, it's kind of a greedy heuristic. So, so basically you can, you, you have a closed form expression for the posterior. So you, you have a cost function. Uh, so the way uh, the, the algorithm works is basically it starts like ripping apart. Let's say we are looking, let's say we just are trying to do edges and triangles. And basically what the, the algorithm is, does, it basically amputates one triangle at a time out of the graph mm -hmm. until there are no triangles left, for instance. Right. And it, it does it in a way that tries to find a, num a maximal number of uh, non-intersecting triangles, for instance. But, but you start from the highest uh, number, right? So, so in, in this example, you start with triangles first, right? And here well, you mean, have the, the, motifs up to degree five or eight or something like that. Yeah, so basically you start with, with, with an empty configuration. So you, 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 uh, you have, let's say 9,000 candidates in, uh, in the case of, uh, of directed graphs. So you try to decompose your network into each of those patterns. And uh, uh, based on how well the network can be decomposed uh, into these uh, subgraphs, you, you select the one that is most efficient in uh, covering the edges of the, of the graph. So in this heuristic, you, you would still have this combinatorial explosion problem, no? Yes, I mean, but it's, uh, I mean, it is slightly lower than enumerating all copies of the subgraph. Why, why is that? I mean, so let's say you, you, you want to, as I said, with the, with the triangle, so basically you, you, you go sequentially, so you, you first take out a triangle, which also means taking out the edges. Yes. Okay. 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 So then you you update your network. Then you take out another triangle. Take out another triangle. So at no, you don't really at any at any stage uh, count or try to find all the triangles. All. The yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Please. Thank you. Are there any other last questions? Real quick. Okay. Very yes, uh, oh, quick. Please. Yes. Okay. Possible. Um, so at your last slide, you said that you were thinking like of ways to combine, say, community structure with this like motif counts or something. Is that a bit similar to like the hierarchical things we've been seeing in the previous presentations? Are you at one level, say, you just do a simple stochastic block model where you only have uh, like degree things, but then at the level below, you start counting uh, like motifs or something or? I mean, so uh, basically, uh, finding like uh, in this in this framework, like uh, fitting a stochastic block model, for instance, is uh, basically reduces to finding a, 
covering the edges of the graph with uh, with edges that have vertex labels. And I mean, going high higher basically means that you uh, not only have edges but also let's say triangles. I mean, I. I don't think, I mean, there is a direct relation to the, to the hierarchical construction. Okay. No, because then, then you would assume like you have hyper nodes between which there's motifs so that that would be, make less sense, I guess. Well, so I guess in, in my, like before you, you mentioned this application in my head, I'd like the example of a brain where there might, for instance, be, you know, like in general processes that run from the back of the brain to the front. But then in each of these regions, on a, so that would be like a path motif or something on the larger scale. But then if you zoom in, you'd find like other things, maybe in like more cycles or whatever. So I was thinking, you know, similar to how we saw these hierarchical models, maybe, okay. you know, you can accommodate for that. But that's, I guess that's all different setting, but it's still Bayesian. So I guess. Yeah, I, uh, I guess one, 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 one could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. <laughs> well, thank you very um, much, Anatole. Um, oh. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Thank you.